Okay, folks, welcome back to the battle for Westnoth. We're right here at the end of the Ford of Ibez scenario. Abez? Ibez? I forget how it's pronounced. And we're moving right along. Doing good. This scenario was pretty good for us. We got a couple of levels. We didn't lose anybody important. Um, we lost our thug, which was unfortunate. But you know what? These things do happen. Um, and overall, we came out of it pretty well. We got Maver up to champion. Champions are really, really nice to have later in the game. That, uh, that multiple... Uh, retaliation, the ability to retaliate against people attacking them no matter what they're doing effectively is very valuable. And having that really high HP is also very valuable. I mean, he has more HP than Delphador, who is two levels above him. Um, it's solid. It is, it is solid. So, let's move along. It's unfortunate that Westnoth takes so long to load, despite being so old. Okay, so across the river lands few humans had ever visited the occasional distant thutter of orcish signal drums. I don't think thutter is a word. Uh, made the abundant pine forests nestled in rolling foothills both breathtaking and ominous. There's at least also at least one too many adjectives in that sentence, but I'm nitpicking. Abez, that's what it is, the fort of Abez. Onset of what would be a harsh winter. So, Northern Winter is the next scenario here. We're coming up towards the Dwarven Doors. So, Winter is bitterly cold. Perhaps we should stop here and rest a while. But we have to go hard after the Scepter of Fire, lest it fall into the hands of our enemies. My question here is, like, what enemies are in front of you? I mean, you've left you've left the, uh, the West Nothians behind. Delphador already said they're unlikely to be able to make it across the river. Um, so, like, why are you pushing so hard right at the moment? We've had a hard march ever since we were besieged. We spent most of our money. Winter bears down. Surely we can settle here for the winter. Yes, let us rest a while. So we've got Inna, this uh, footpad here, has come with us, interestingly. I do not think I could endure another like the fording of the river for many days. <laughs> Onward, I say! Kalens, just fucking chill for a minute, all right? They are right, Kalens. It is not to be. Our soldiers will begin to desert if they do not rest soon. It's true. But, but the orcs are coming. So, we have to fight the orcs for control of the land. So, this is a really simple scenario. Defeat all enemy leaders. It's got a long uh, period for you. We've got two orcish warriors up here, not warlords, just level twos. So, we can kill them with ranged attacks. This scenario is almost a little bit of a rest. You kind of get to take a breather here and work on, uh, on taking some of these. Work on building up cash and levels and all that. So, we're going to grab some villages real quick. And... Let's look at who we want to recall for this scenario. We shouldn't really need our level 3s. Um, we will want to bring in Elrian, because Elrian is, of course, loyal, and we would like to level him up all the way to max. We will also want to bring in... Uh, we could use Mabua in this scenario to level. The problem is, of course, that this is not a water scenario, so Mabua is not going to be very useful. We're going to wait on him. We're going we're gonna to give him some time to think about it. We will definitely want an Elvish Captain for leadership. Having a couple of leaders is always good. We can also bring Sanin, our Elvish hero, because those are good. In terms of recruitment, then, we're actually going to recruit a couple more Elvish scouts. We might try to get another rider in this scenario. I really like Elvish riders and outriders. I know they're not they're not the strongest units, but the speed and flexibility they bring is very useful. Plus, these scouts will be able to swing around and get us some uh, some of the... I'm losing my mind. Thumbs the villages very quickly. Have you noticed that happens to me a lot? I, I lose my mind pretty frequently. Uh, we're also going to recruit another horseman, or possibly two. Let's just get one for now. Um, knights are such useful units in so many circumstances. Uh, we've got a couple of good ones. We've got our paladin, we've got our grand knight, but I'd like another knight or two. Then in terms of other recall and recruitment, what other units do we have that we might want to bring with us? We have Reglock, the loyal assassin. We could bring him. Um, of course, our merfolk are loyal. We have this rogue that we leveled up in the last scenario. And rogues are pretty neat. So let's recall him as well. And let's get... Do we have any more loyalists down here we could bring out? An intelligent, dexterous scout. Eh, five experience isn't worth recalling. 60 out of 106. That's, that's a merfolk. Um... In terms of recalls, I don't think we have a whole lot more recalls that are valuable. All these guys are just low-level chaff units that happen to survive. Um, intelligent and Resilient is a pretty good combo for a mage. Actually, Quick and Intelligent is even better. Yes, Quick does lower HP, but um, they already have garbage HP, and Intelligent makes them level a lot faster, which is valuable for mages. That said, I've already leveled several mages, so I'd rather focus on something else for now. So, let's recruit... Um... 
Yeah, an Elvish Archer. Let's see if we can build up a Ranger or two. And these Orcs are mainly going to recruit level 1s. They can, however, recruit Ogres, which is a little bit scary. And Trolls. Uh, trolls and Ogres, very similar kinds of units. Um, but, of course, the, uh, the Trolls have regeneration. So you can see the, the gimmick in this scenario is that the snow spreads and slows you down. So yeah, Bork the Ogres, lots of damage, lots of HP. The Trolls, slightly higher damage, but fewer strikes, chaotic, and can regenerate while having a little bit less HP. So you can grab that. You can push north. You, sir, can grab that. You can not quite make it across the snow, because snow, as I said, slows you down. You can move north. Uh, we can push these guys up. And let's get Kalens up in here. Get our horsemen up into the open fields. Our mage move forward, our captain, and our hero. And let's focus on recruiting more level ones. We'll get an Elvish Shaman. We'll get an Elvish Fighter or two. Let's get a couple of them, actually. A couple of Fighters. Get an Archer. Um, Another Scout, maybe? Another Horseman? Let's get another Horseman. And then we'll spend the last of our money on a second Fighter. Third Fighter. And with that, it's going to be a few turns before we get any more money built up. So we will move Conrad north. The plan here is to push straight north through this area, seize control of all of these villages, fight the blue orc while holding the green orc off in this belt of hills and woods, if possible, or possibly send some elves over to seize control of this woods and hold the orcs off there. And then we can use that fortress to recruit again and make the push over to the side, over to the uh, east, to take out Gorlak. Meanwhile, this one scout will run around here, just claiming villages, keeping us fresh and happy. Might send a horseman with him for support. This does tend to be a fairly long scenario just because the map is big, but that's fine. Like I said, it gives you time to build up cash, uh, gives you lots of experience if the enemy keep recruiting units, which I hope they will, and you can kind of, kind of relax a little bit after those really tense past couple of scenarios. So, uh, yeah, actually, he'll be really slow getting across the mountain, so let's just launch him up here. Let's send an archer and a fighter over this way to back this scout up. You can run north, you can run north, and we can get some of these boys, some of these boys moving through the forest. Yep, now Conrad can move up there, send the archer into the woods. Uh, let's send Lothlar, and Sanin should probably move straight north, Delphidor can move up there. Yeah, we'll get an Elf or two going off with Lothlar to kind of take this region. Um, he might be surrounded in the mountains, so we'll have to determine whether we need to pull back or not. But like I said, it's going to be a few turns before we can recruit any more troops anyway, so we are going to kind of have to keep it together in order to fight our way through these guys. We'll see how it goes. Don't want to spread out too, too much. The Orcs are definitely doing the same thing we are, taking villages. And our goal is, by the time the battle lines are kind of drawn, we want to end up with, um, ideally, a lot of these villages. Like, if we could get 20, that would be really nice. But I don't think we can, just because of the way the map is set up. I think the most we can realistically hope for is, I don't know, 14 or 15. Um, we'll send that archer. This fighter actually probably does not need to support them. We can run up there with you. You can run up that way. You can grab that. You grab that. You grab that. That, I think, is going to draw the battle lines, because that Wolf Rider can reach us in the next turn. Conrad can push up that way. Um, let's get... Yeah, our Horseman can grab that, since he's not useful just yet. And we can push our Archer and our main man over that way. Or our main man, Lothlar, there. I would like to level Lothlar up in this scenario. In terms of who else I want to level, like I said, I'd like to level another Archer. And I'd like to level a Scout if I can. Um, we'll work on building up more of a level 2 base, because I have actually quite a, quite a number of level 3s at this point. Not a whole lot of reliable, kind of solid, lower level, level 2s to lean on. We'll see how it goes. The Elite Cadre I don't really want to pull out if I don't have to. You know, in scenarios where they're not really needed, I'd like to sort of leave them in the stable to uh, enjoy their well-earned rest, and more importantly, 
to not steal experience from lower level units who could use it more. That Wolf Rider, I think, has come to the wrong neighborhood, though. He's done some damage, but it's not going to, uh, it's not going to pay off well for him. We'll see how well our, our Elvish uh, scouts over on this side can handle the Orcish ass Assault. The Orcish Assault. Kalens. Yo, you can take that. That's fine, because they can't reach you. Only one guy can. This scout, meanwhile, we can get up here and throw knives at him. He's only got 50% defense, so yeah, now we can come up there. That's an 87% kill. Great. Excellent. Okay, so we're getting a little bit of experience on the scout. He is dexterous and resilient, which is a great combination of attributes. This elvish fighter, meanwhile, so what I want... Or rather, what I don't want is I don't want the orcs being able to line up on hills against me in the plains, because orcs, of course, have decent defense in hills. Ideally, I would have I would be fighting in the woods, but I don't want to give up all this all this land uh, in search of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push my units up like this. There, I'm in the mountains. Gives me a little bit of an advantage. We'll get this guy skating up north to cause havoc. I'm sorry, that this girl in is definitely female. And, oh, we missed a spot. Grab that one. Great. Now our income is very, very healthy. Um, Actually, at this point, might want to send Conrad back to recruit. And it'll be too far. I think I can beat Blue with these troops that I have. So I think we'll just set Conrad right there. We could launch a charge, but nighttime is not the, uh, not the time for those shenanigans. So we are going to wait. What I'll do, however, is I'll put him... Right, he has only has 30 HP. Yeah, let's leave him on the on the village. The next turn, you should be able to grab that, and you uh won't be able to reach there. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, you won't quite be able to reach it, and the wolf rider will. Uh, I'm gonna need to push this guy over here and probably set a line right here in the woods. I might have to send the shaman over as well. Meanwhile, my scout can start crossing. The mountains and it looks like we should be able to get all these villages basically for free it'll just take time okay yep yeah, he's coming after the scout that's fine feed the scout a little bit more experience a little bit of damage too but it doesn't hurt my combat capability very much to pull a scout out so eh, who cares a little bit more orcish recruitment coming out but i'm not super worried yet I am definitely going to be taking some pressure on the eastern flank here, though. If those trolls actually work their way around here and come down on top of me, that would be ideal. Uh, what would also be ideal would be if I could get some free shots on him, but I don't think I can. Um, I can take that village. What I can do is I can push this guy up, push Delphidor over in this direction. That will give me the firepower to hold this, I think. That troll is going to be the problem, but he's not going to show up until daytime so let's grab that village let's grab that village let's push these units over in this direction and this force should be able to take this out so move up there 75 70 percent defense is grand uh that's an archer so we want to fight him in melee we don't have a whole lot oh we've got an orcish grunt and an ogre to worry about we could go in with conrad in melee right here A little bit of damage, not a huge amount. But Conrad and Kalens can both come in and hurt this archer a lot. And then this guy, with 50% defense, if this guy kills the archer, he'll be ganged up on and murdered. So what we need is we just need to form a line like that and not let them split anybody off. Because if they can't split anybody off, we'll be fine. Then this guy can come up here. He could get the backstab. But what I want is I want Harielel to get the kill. And then put somebody else up front. But actually, tell you what. Let's pull that. Let's put him there. Let's put... No. Hmm. You there for healing. You. That would be bad news. That ogre can't really push down. He's got five movement points and he's slowed down by the snow. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's the furthest he can reach. Elrian would almost certainly kill the wolf rider. 
Let's throw sling bullets at him. 60% defense on a 47. Uh, let's throw knives at him. Ooh, very, very good. And then let's just shoot arrows at him. There you go. Good job. Okay, now Elrian has 61 uh, HP. So actually, I'm going to put him right there, I think. Because the sword attack doesn't do any extra damage. So 10 times 3, 11 times 2. That's 22... 52, they can't kill Elrian this turn. Even if all of their attacks hit, they still can't kill him. So we're going to put him right there. Um, and he'll get to retaliate if they come after him in melee. If they come after him at range, he'll freaking smoke him. That will be fine. And then Radok can be positioned right here to completely surround that hex if anybody tries any funny business. I think what they're actually probably going to do is they're going to try to surround Inna, but Inna's on 70% defense terrain, so Inna should be okay. And down here, we can run across. That was the wrong hex. Run across and grab a village, and you can also run across. Start making up some time, and we can get our horseman rushing up to reinforce the front with his little prancing pony. Ain't he so cute? Ooh! Oh, never mind. Never mind. Wow. That foot pad went down in a hurry. Okay. That was a little bit more depressing than I thought it would be. But we should be alright. Come on now. I mean, come on now. Do not. Two out of three hits, really, both times. That's frustrating. Not completely out of line, but frustrating. Uh, story of Westnoth. Story of Westnoth, indeed. Let me, one sec, let me... Yeah, yeah, 10% swing in both directions. That's pretty frustrating. Like I said, it happens. So, see, things like this, things like this are why I kind of suspect the Westnoth RNG a little bit, because I check this quite often, and I am, I think, consistently a little bit low here and a little bit high here most of the time. I'm not going to say all of the time, because it's not all of the time, but, like, a lot of the time, that's true. Um, let's blast this guy with lightning real quick. I know I'm... okay. Okay, that's fine. That works out alright. Um, I don't really want to take the damage of trying to kill him, so just shoot him. We're going to give up that village real quick. I'm going to swing over here into 70% defense terrain to land some damage on that one as well. That will also trap him in place. These two can both attack, uh, I can't pronounce that name, Kenos, but Kenos can, of course, survive those attacks, especially since they're no longer getting their damage boost. And we are building up a substantial chunk of change. Let's get our horsemen running over in this direction to help as well. And on this side, Elrian is taking damage and is a little bit vulnerable, but we now have access to... The Horseman Charge! Uh, he has 23 health. What I'd like would be, once again, to give the, the, the kill to this guy. So let's let's try it. Let's see how it goes. Okay, it went really, really badly. That's frustrating. Um, Get over here and, and stab him, please. 64% kill, yeah, that's fine. Great. That works out okay. So he's got 9 HP now. I don't want to do that, but I do want to go in with the sword. Why does he have a 70% hit chance? Oh, because I'm on snow. Oof. Can I get around to kill him from the side if this doesn't work? No. Okay, we're going to pull back. Uh, You, sir, are going to move back and fireball him. There you go. <gasps> You, madame, are going to move forward and entangle this ogre. Great. Now, uh, it is daytime, so the damage is lessened. You can come down here, blast him with fairy fire. That'll do about 30 damage. I'd like to kill this orcish archer. This guy can only fight this troll whelp, so what we're going to end up doing here is Conrad... I don't want to put Conrad in danger. He's slowed, so he's only got 15 damage output. 
Let's move Conrad here and use the bow. How fast is he? Pretty fast, unless we do this. That blocks him up, okay. Might be sacrificing the body there a little bit. And then you, sir, can come down here and blast this ogre with fairy fire. You can come down here and shoot this ogre with your bow. And you can move right there and shoot this troll whelp with your bow. There, now I think... 15, 18 is 33, 18, and 14 is another 32. Yeah, I think they would have to hit every attack in order to kill Kalenz, so I think he'll be fine. Um, this guy, meanwhile, is going to be sitting back here healing up, and we'll probably have to rotate Kalenz back after this. Uh, I think I'm a little bit too spread out. Over here, I've got too many forces committed on this side, fighting relatively weak forces. I've got to pull one or two of these guys back. That's fine. Okay, they're going for the healer. Understandable. Good, and they failed to kill the healer. Great. And they are pulling back for heals. The AI does get smart in situations like this, where it starts kind of cycling back to heal units instead of pushing the attack aggressively. Um, which is actually fine with me. When you don't, when you're good at protecting your units, um, when you do that well, then Westnoth AI is pretty solid. When you, if you leave units even the slightest bit exposed, Westnoth AI turns incredibly suicidal. Like this right here. All three of these units tried to jump on my Elvish Archer, despite it actually putting them in a pretty bad situation. Which is, I've talked about that before, that is definitely one of the things that I don't like so much about Westnoth. Now, you, sir, could almost level by killing that ogre. You, sir, can flip around to this side and backstab this guy. Okay, you... One hit will kill him, so go for it. Okay, it didn't work out. Um, shoot. Why don't you blast him with magic, please? Ogres are great tanks, which is why this ogre is standing here. He's he's being a great tank. Uh, you are not going to be able to deal with that. So what I need is, I need Conrad to move. I need to finish this guy off with the wizard. Please. Oh my god. I hate you so much. Alright. You have 28 HP, okay. I can't even... Oh my god. Oh my god. Look at this shit. This is ridiculous. It's just fucking stupid. <sighs> See, now I have to do something here or they'll kill my horseman. So, I need to sacrifice you to entangle him. Which doesn't work, of course, but at least it'll absorb a round of attacks. You... The fact that I've missed literally 30% more damage than I should have has now made this much more frustrating and difficult than it should be. Once again. So, yeah. Thank you, Westnoth. You're... Really doing a great job here. Really making me proud. Good fucking job. Senin. At this point, we are at risk of the Orcish Gangbang coming in. So, you just do what damage you can here. You, low chance to finish him off. So instead, pull back, I think. We could get Conrad helping you out to do extra damage. What would that do? Uh, no, it wouldn't change the number of strikes necessary. And because we swapped out for what should have been a very reliable kill, Conrad is now also kind of at risk. Um, what can we do? We can get Conrad up here, 
That's... And then you can be in the woods. Okay, that will help. And then if you get there... Okay. Because that limits the angles of attack against Conrad. Uh, it's still real... That's still really risky. Because that ogre will probably get off one hit before dying, and then this guy will move in and get off a hit before dying. At which point I'm down to 30 health. And all they have to do is do 30 damage from two spots. Uh, I don't think they can, though, so... Oh, fuck, did I not... I... Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I didn't move some of my units. One second, we're going back. Okay. Yeah, I did. I just forgot some of my units there. Ah, uh, where was I? What did I do this last turn? Shit, I forget. Well, I, I did this. And I did this. So we're just gonna- we're gonna do the same things we just did. Insofar as possible. Yeah, okay, that was stupid and horrible, but alright. Still worked out. Okay, um... You tried to entangle him, I recall. Okay, he's entangled, that's fine. You tried to backstab him. You tried to horse charge him. Okay, that changes things a lot. I promise I didn't intend, intend that. This is the one thing that I, uh... do get frustrated about with these games. Um... Yeah, that changes things a lot. Especially because he is entangled, and he wasn't before. And now he's dead. Nope, that was not what I wanted. Yeah, so this is slightly more towards what the mean should be. I've only taken slightly more damage and inflicted slightly less damage than I should have. This is actually within, you know, normal variation. So, in this case... Now I'm in an okay situation. And I still have Kalens to move. Because now what I can do is swing Kalens over here, fairy fire that troll weld. And now Ravor is still going to die, but I am not nearly so threatened in a lot of places. Um, and this guy can take this right there. Uh, Kalen's probably going to take some damage. Meanwhile, down here, let's move this guy over this way. Uh, this archer has taken a lot more damage than she really should have, but what we can do now is kind of kind of dogpile on these guys. Do a little bit of damage there. Move out that way, move out this way. Eh, I don't really want to be on 30% terrain, so come down this way. Archer can move back. Ooh, it's 20% terrain for Delphador. But he has enough HP to just tank it. So yeah, just blast that guy with lightning real quick. Great. And now we're in a really solid position. You see the difference that a few percent can make? See the difference? See, like, Taken, that's literally one missed hit. This is two or three missed hits, so I've still, I'm still doing worse than I should. And overall in this scenario, I'm doing noticeably worse than I should. About 30% worse than I should overall. But doing 30% worse than I should tactics can handle. Doing 50 or 60% worse than you statistically should, that's the kind of thing that, tactically speaking, you can't really compensate for. That's just... the game's decided that you're fucked today. Yep, Delphidor's gonna take some pounding now, but he'll be alright. Okay. Great, and that wolf is actually pushed down into our territory instead of attacking Kalens. Which is fine. It's morning. We still have another turn or two of getting to just whip up on these guys. This horseman can ride over here. Oh, ooh, that's a... You'd have to hit twice. In that case, why don't we... No. No. In that case, why don't we slow this wolf rider? And then we can come over here and launch the spirit charge. Of course. Naturally. As you do. There we go. There we go. Okay, great. That happened. 
and you can push straight north. You, I would love to give you another kill. So who can we kill with you? Will we kill him with you? We might be able to kill him with you. There we go. Good job. You take that. And the wizard can take that territory. Alright, so one more kill on our Elvish Scout will level up to a Rider, which will be sweet. Pretty cool. Oh, we do have a troll coming down here, which will be a little bit of a problem. Neither of these units are very good at taking on a troll. Uh, but I think on this side, it's a rousing victory showing up for us. 18. Let's get a little bit of bow action on him. Uh, 24. I'd like a little bit more bow action on him before we go in for that. Now he's down to 15. So three hits will do. Eh, it's only 31%. Let's come in with the sword first. Try and take on that guy. Uh, I actually want to leave my archer back here for now. So we'll just hold our positions there. Units all done. We've got about 100 gold saved up. We're chewed through most of the blues. We just got the greens coming in to help them out now. Only turn nine. We've still got plenty of time to accomplish our goals here. And we're still going to get one more turn of the orcs not being very good. Yep, Archer's going to come down here to shoot at the uh, shoot at the horseman, which is to be expected since the horseman can't retaliate. Yep, yep, that's it. Come stab me. That's yeah, that's to be expected. We see ya. We see ya coming in here all fat and happy, stabbing people. All right, and now come the trolls. The trolls will be a little bit problematic, but we'll be able to handle them. Uh, you just have to hit them with range damage. And you have to damage them pretty quickly. Okay, we must make haste before the snow overwhelms us. So more snow coming down. That's fine. Uh, it's been about a half hour. I'm actually going to call this one here. We'll have to finish this scenario in another video. Um, as I said, these these scenarios do get longer as you go along here. Uh, which is fine. I mean, they're, they're interesting. I like them. I'm having fun with them. So... Thanks for watching. Uh, if you like the video, leave a like on it. Tell YouTube so I can keep doing this and YouTube will keep sending me viewers because uh, uh, I'm uh, self-absorbed and want everyone to watch my shit. So in any case, thanks once more and I will see you all in the next video.